So tardive dyskinesia is one of those conditions which uh, is more common than I think most people realize. It affects more than 500,000 people in the U.S. And the challenge is these involuntary movements, they affect the mouth, the tongue, the jaw, the limbs, the trunk, they add to the stigma of mental illness. So this is really hard for, for patients because often the result uh, is social isolation. Other people are very uncomfortable near individuals or they're already dealing with uh, depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and now to have these involuntary movements adds that layer of discomfort with everybody around. It, it's true that uh, the involuntary movements sometimes cause physical disability, bite the tongue, falling, uh, but more often it's that social isolation. So treatment of TD can improve uh, the, uh, the impact of TD uh, on these very complicated patients. We imagine that uh, two groups of docs will be using Ingresa for the treatment of TD, neurologists and psychiatrists. And the psychiatrists uh, are the ones who are treating patients with underlying psychiatric disease on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, they would simply now have an option of adding this medication to the program. The neurologists typically get referred the complicated patients with very unusual movement disorders, trying to understand what the condition is, and they will able to say, this is really TD or this is some other neurologic condition and, and here's how Ingresa could be used. So, so we knew more than 10 years ago that targeting this protein in the brain called VMAT2 could help regulate this dysfunctional movement control system in the basal ganglia. What we had to do was come up with a molecule that did that and only that and no other what we call off-target pharmacology effects. So the first couple of years were spent going through hundreds of molecules to find the one that became valbenazine with the brand name of Ingresa. The, uh, the next steps uh, were getting it through all the hurdles it's called preclinical safety testing. And we uh, then took the molecule for the first time into a human in 2009. Uh, and then since that time, we've conducted over 20 clinical trials in, in patients uh, to get where we are today. So it was, there were a lot of hurdles. Mm -hmm. The clinical trials for tardive dyskinesia had never been done to get a drug approved. So we had to figure out how to design and run the trials, how to measure the dyskinesia, and that was a major challenge. We had setbacks, not pushbacks. I have to say this, uh, as a neurologist who works in drug discovery and development, I've worked with the FDA on a number of different projects mm -hmm. over the years. In this situation, the Division of Psychiatric Products at the FDA was very engaged, and they were absolutely committed to help get a treatment to patients. And so the, the, there were setbacks, but not pushbacks. And the, and the setbacks had to do with figuring out how to actually design and run the clinical trials and get them to read out properly.